sides, but by developing true skills and true courage in the face of what reality is really sending to you. So, we've got a lot to do. We've got to put down the iPods and get busy. There's no time for hand-wringing, whining, or whinging. And as Yogi Berra once remarked, our whole future's ahead of us. <laughs> so, that concludes my formal remarks, and I guess we'll get on with the questions. Thank you. I'm Kerry Curtis. I'm the chair of the club's Environment and Natural Resources Forum, and I will be moderating, t moderating today's audience question period. We have a ton of questions here, Jim, so uh, let's begin. The, f uh, the first one has to do with the, uh, the politics in the U.S. and how uh, politics is likely to uh, evolve or devolve in response to uh, the pressures that will come with the uh, decline of oil and so forth. Yeah, well, they're liable to, uh, to become more delusional because that's, that's generally what happens when a society is stressed. The higher the stress level gets, the poorer the thinking becomes collectively. That's something that we can expect, and we better be prepared for that. You know, we better be prepared for uh, the American public to demand a campaign to sustain the unsustainable which, as I said in my formal remarks, will be a tremendous exercise in futility and a, and a continued uh, 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 misinvestment in the future, yeah, uh, a misinvestment in things that have no future. You know, right now, uh, around the United States, w there are many plans for building gigantic new interstate highways, that, this gigantic NAFTA highway that's going to begin to be constructed in Texas. You know, we can't afford to make these kinds of investments. They're very poor choices. Um, several uh, members of the audience have questions about specific uh, forms of energy other than, uh, other than oil, such as oil sands. You mentioned that, uh, the uh, Canadian uh, source of uh, petroleum. Uh, and uh, nuclear, a lot of proposals to build more nuclear uh, energy. And then also conservation. You, you, you don't hear uh, the big oil companies talking much about conservation. Uh, you, you, at the beginning of your talk, you said you didn't think any of those measures or, or collectively they could make up for the decline at you know, petroleum sources. No, they're not going to make up for it. Uh, we're still going to be required to uh, make other arrangements for all these major things, whether we like it or not. Um, we'll probably use these things, and they're, they're probably going to um, disappoint us. However, the, the quality of the public discussion about this stuff is just terrible, deplorable. You know, uh, we may actually need to run nuclear energy. We don't know yet, but we're not having any kind of public debate about it. There are a lot of valid arguments not to do nuclear. There are a lot of valid arguments to be afraid of nuclear and, and, and to shy away from it. Uh, there's also the idea that we might not be able to keep the lights on in 20 years if we don't do it. So I'm not coming down necessarily either one way or the other on that, but what I am saying to the public is, where's the public debate about that? Because we better start it. Because if we are going to build reactors, it takes 10 years to get them built. Uh, as far as conservation goes, do we want Daddy or Mommy to tell us to conserve? You know, the American public needs to demand this in one way or another. My guess is we probably won't demand that until we really feel the pain of price increases. That hasn't quite happened yet. Part of the crux of this issue is we, we really have a short win, window of opportunity to get going on this in a coherent and, and uh, comprehensive way without inviting a great deal of political and social and economic turbulence and destruction. You know, a lot of the kind of social turbulence we face will be very destructive. It will destroy everything from uh, our ability to do any of these projects to the sheer knowledge base that we p possess. You know, there, there are things that we know how to do now that we may forget in the future if we live in a very disorderly society in which institutions are badly damaged. So th these are the kinds of things we need to be very worried about. Er earlier you mentioned that, uh, that politics is likely to become uh, even more delusional. And in that spirit, these two questions uh, come along. One is... Uh, how much will the huge cost of the Iraq war accelerate this uh, long emergency? And given uh, U.S. desperation to secure energy resources, do you think that the U.S. will attack Iran? And if so, uh, I'll what I'll take those backwards. There? You know, a lot of the people who correspond with me are very nervous about Iran. Uh, I, for one, am not really that 
exercised about it. I don't think it's immediately uh, on the menu. I would be surprised if, if, if it is, unless the Iranians do something really crazy. Um, our misinvestment in Iraq, I think, is going to be um, have tremendous consequences. Uh, in the first place, we've already succeeded in exhausting and bankrupting our military to a significant degree. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to leave the Middle East. You know, our, our purpose in the Middle East really is pretty, pretty simple. We went there, uh, apart from having, you know, apart from the trauma of 9-11 and having to, to, to strike back at some Arab uh, uh, entity, in, the, in this case, Saddam Hussein, because he was the best candidate for this. Um, apart from that, the whole purpose was to modify and influence the behavior of the major players in the Middle East, namely Iran and Saudi Arabia. Sooner or later, whether it's a year or 36 months or five years, we're not going to be there anymore, and we're going to have to withdraw. We're going to lose our influence in that part of the world. We're going to have to withdraw into the Western Hemisphere. What then will we do to run Walt Disney World and Walmart when we lose our influence in these other parts of the world where they have oil? We're going to not be able to control events in that part of the world. Now, that's a strictly sort of pragmatic and strategic view of the situation, but I think that's where we're headed, and those are the kinds of questions we have to ask. I'd like to remind our uh, listening audience on the radio that this is a program of the Commonwealth Club of California, and you're listening to James Howard Kunstler. His topic is the long emergency. Um, what are your thoughts, Jim, about the, the ecological footprint concept and the metric that goes along with it in terms of assisting policyholders and decision makers? Well, I'm not 